Hi everyone, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make a panel project and this will work on any size panel. I got this idea by looking at these really cute panels behind me. These are from Moda, designed by Ira Kennedy and I thought what can I do to make those look really nice? So what I want to do is make this look kind of like a French door where these are the window panes. So I just cut it into six equal sections and then I'm going to fill in with a fabric to make it look like the wood that goes between the windows. And then I'm going to add some really nice patchwork around the outside. And I can make all that patchwork with some charm squares. The first thing you want to do is iron up your panel so it's nice and flat and ready to work with. Now, we want to trim the edges straight. I'm going to trim off this extra here. And it's a little bit easier if you fold it in half, then you can fit it on your cutting board. So I'm just going to line this fold up on a straight line and trim some from each side. Now I'm going to cut my panel right down the middle this way. So the easiest way to do that is to fold it up again so that it all fits on your cutting board and just measure how wide it is. Mine is 27 and a half. So I'm going to measure over half of that, which in my case is 13 and three quarters. And I'm going to cut right down there. Now we want to cut it the other way into thirds. So we'll turn them both and we can cut them at the same time. So I'm just going to stack them on top of themselves here. And we're going to measure how long it is and divide it into thirds. So you might want to use a calculator for this step. Now we're ready to cut out the background fabric. It's very easy to cut because there's only two size pieces that we need. The first size is going to go here and here and here. There's three for this row. Same size here, here, here. Same thing up on top. Once we have those all done, then all we need is a long piece that's going to go between, between, and on the top and on the bottom. So we're going to start with the vertical pieces. And no matter what size panel you're using, they're all going to get cut one inch wide. And for the length, all we're going to do is cut them the same length that we cut our squares to earlier. And so mine were cut 13 and 7 eighths. So I've got nine vertical strips here that are going to go between and on the outside of each of these three rows. So I've basically got three rows now. So I'm just going to pick up this first row and take it right over to the sewing machine. So you're welcome to pin yours together if you like. It's pretty easy to keep things in order because there's not too many pieces in this row but I'm just going to carefully use a quarter inch seam here and stitch this on. Now my background is pretty light, so I'm going to put my seam allowance away from the background. So I'm just going to finger press by making sure the seams are facing that way and holding this open a little and drawing my fingernail right down there. I'm going to iron it later too, but finger pressing helps keep the seam going the way I want it to go. Now I'm going to take the second vertical piece and stitch it onto that square. And I'm just gonna take this part and set it on my lap for now without spinning it around. And again, you wanna be real careful to have your quarter inch just exactly perfect because 
this piece is pretty little and the smaller the pieces are, the more it will show if you didn't sew it real straight. So I try to be real careful on these little pieces. Now again, finger press with the seam allowances towards the darker fabric. And now we can take this piece that I stitched earlier, put them right sides together here. Finger press again towards the dark. And now we just have this one last piece to sew on and it's easiest if you just spin everything around. First row is done. I'm going to go ahead and do the exact same thing for the next two rows. I've got my other two rows stitched up and before we move on, I want to take these to the ironing board and get them nice and flat. Now, all we have to do is get the long strips that go between and on the top and bottom. Now these long strips are also cut one inch wide, but I'm not going to cut them to length. I'm going to take them right over to the rows that we already made. And that's because I'm not even going to measure them. I'm just going to take one strip and lay it right across here, smooth it out, and then I'm gonna cut off of both sides. And that way it's exactly the same length as my first row here. Now the reason I'm cutting off of both sides is because there's selvages on my strips and I don't wanna selvage on either end. We're gonna need four of these. So you can either lay each one out on the panels or you can just take your strip that's cut to the length you've got and lay it on top of the other three and cut them to the cut them to size. Now all we have to do is sew all these rows together. Here's how I like to stitch on this small piece here. I'm going to line up these corners and I'm going to stitch about an inch. Now I'm going to go to the very far end here and I'm going to match up these two corners and I'm going to put a pin in. Now I'm going to stretch this out. It's not that long so I can I can reach, I can see. And then I'm just going to hold this in the middle. I'm not going to pin it. You can pin it if you like, but pretty much it's a section that I can hold and I can stitch all the way to where my fingers are holding without having to put any pins in. They were cut exactly the same length, so it's not likely that anything's going to get out of position or move. Now I can just grab this pin way at the bottom here, pull everything straight again, and stitch the rest of the piece on. Now this seam allowance is also going to get pressed toward the dark. So pull it away a little bit and then draw your fingernail or even the pad of your finger down that seam. Now where you've got this seam allowance here, it's a little bit thicker. You've got to press a little bit harder to get that squished nice and flat. Now that we've got the long strips on both sides of this top row, we want to attach this row to the next row and we want to make sure when we stitch them that the patchwork lines up. We don't want it off like this. We want it matched up. And even though they're both the same length, it's still possible to stitch it and have it moved a little like that. And we don't want that. So here's all you have to do. The intersection here, we've got this guy here and this guy here. So you can roll this back and see if they're right on top of themselves. 
and then line up your edges here, get everything flat, and then fold everything back. And if you've got it folded straight, you can see if your stitching lines would be continuous if it was all one piece there. And then I'm just going to go ahead and put a pin right here in the middle. And that's going to keep things from moving while I start at the top here. And I will stitch down to that pin. And I'll take it out before I get to it. Now I can match the bottom corners up here and hold this and just keep stitching. And let's see how close we got. See, it pretty much looks like it's one long line, which is what we were looking for. So I went ahead and stitched up the whole top, and now we're ready to start working on our patchwork border. So all we need to do is to cut each square, cut one and three quarters inches off of each side. So I'm gonna take four or five at a time, and they're already nicely stacked up. And if you're more comfortable only cutting two layers, just cut two layers. But I'm going to measure over one and three quarters inches from this edge and cut that off. And then you can turn it around if you like, because I find it a lot easier to measure over this way. And we're going to cut one and three quarters off of the other side. And that leaves this piece here, which is a little bit smaller. It's only one and a half inches. And I'm going to do that with all my squares. So now I have two wide and one narrow from all of the squares. And I'm going to take this pair of the wider ones and then I'm going to grab a narrow one, a different color. Let's take this one here and they're going to get stitched together like this. So a pair of wide and one narrow one. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick up random colors using different ones and make all my blocks like that. So I'm back at the machine here. I've got three strips. They're all the same length. So let's stitch these two together first. And all my strips they're all colorful, so I'm just going to press this seam toward the middle. Now we'll take this piece and stitch it on. And let's press that seam allowance also towards the middle. So both seam allowances are heading inward. Even though we finger pressed, we're still going to want to iron these so I like to smooth them out, make sure those seams look straight. Dry iron, then a little steam. Now that we've stitched these up, they're four inches wide, but they're still five inches long. So we need to trim them down so they're square. So we need to trim them to four inches. So I find it easiest just to trim off of one side here. Now we have a nice four by four inch square patchwork block. Once all your little blocks are stitched and trimmed and ironed, you can go ahead and lay them out here. They just go every other direction. And once I get a few, I will trade the colors around so I don't get too much blue or too much green all in one spot. I've already got way too much right there. So let's put that one there. Let's get some with a little yellow. And you can estimate how many blocks you're going to need to fit on here. Each block has a three and a half inch finished size. So you can measure how big your panel is with your little borders, and then you can divide by three and a half to get an estimate for how many blocks will fit. Now you can always sew one extra block. You wanna make it a little longer, if anything, because we can trim off any extra length. 
So these also just get stitched together with a quarter inch seam allowance. And we're just going to press the seam allowance away from the, this this block here has patchwork so there's extra seam allowances going like that so that seam allowance wants to go in that direction so let's go ahead and press it that way now after we sew this one on that seam allowance is going to go in that direction again because you've got the extra bulk from these seams there so you always want to finger press in the direction that the seams want to go if you have an option. So we're going to fold this one this time. So this one with the extra seams is going out. So I'm going to keep stitching these on until I've got the whole row done. Even though we finger press this, I still want to iron it and make sure it's nice and flat. So I'm going to smooth it out a little and start at one end and just keep smoothing all the fabric towards the far end. And then I'm going to steam it. And I'll even pick it up and make sure I'm stretching it a teeny bit so it's really straight and flat. Now we're going to put this patchwork strip along the bottom edge of the panel. And we want it to be exactly the same size as the panel. Now if it's already a little bit wider, you can trim a little bit off of each side. If you stitched it up and it's not quite big enough, then put another patchwork square here and then center it up and trim a little bit off of each side. We're just going to stitch this on with a quarter inch seam allowance and you can pin it if you like. My project is still pretty small, so I'm just going to start sewing and then match up the far corner. And I think I can hold it. I'll probably pinch in the middle and then just carefully stitch it on. I went ahead and stitched the patchwork border onto the top as well as the bottom. And now we're ready to put those side patchwork borders on. So what you need to do is measure the whole thing you've got from the bottom of this patchwork all the way to the top of this patchwork and then divide by three and a half inches because that's how big our blocks are. So you can get an estimate of how many blocks to make for this row. Again, make it a little bigger if you're unsure and then we can always trim off any excess. Now, one thing I noticed as I was sewing, it's a lot easier to get your seam perfect if you put this white on the top don't put your patchwork row on the top when you're sewing because even though I wanted my patchwork to be 100% perfectly straight, you can see here it's not completely perfectly straight, but this cut edge is. So I could put this cut edge right on my presser foot and it's a lot easier to get it completely accurate. I've got the whole top done, and I'm just going to finish this up like a regular big quilt. It's little, so you could quilt this on your home machine if you like. And if you do that, you can just follow all these lines. You can go around the flowers. But since I've got the big quilting machine, I'm gonna go ahead and load it up on there and get it finished up. I've got the French door panel quilt all done. Very happy with how it turned out. It's 36 by 48, so it's nicely proportioned. I quilted it with 
circles all over because all of these patterns are made with all of those round circles. So you can see a little bit of the quilting here. I used kind of a medium color green thread and I just didn't want the quilting to fight with any of the beautiful pattern, the beautiful panel. Now, because I used these small sections here, the pattern itself, the panel, there's no break in it at all. You could make yours a little bit wider if you like, and it would still look very nice. I used a coordinating print on the back. These are from the Dreamscapes collection from Moda. And I used the same backing fabric on the binding. And I think that blue framed it very nicely. Now I did have a hard time deciding if I should use white or black for the accent color here. So I went ahead and made the other panel with black. And I'm happy with how that one turned out too. I really still can't decide which one I like better. Let me know which one you like by leaving a comment down below. Thanks for watching our tutorial today. We hope you enjoyed it. Now before we go, another giveaway. This is called Pinwheel Charm. It's all made with Civil War style prints, very traditional patchwork, nice deep dark browns and rusts. Oh, very nice old fashioned looking print on the back side. Now it's very easy to enter the giveaways. All you have to do is put in your name and your email address in the link right below the video that says giveaway. And remember, we can send this to a winner anywhere in the world. So good luck. Now, if you like our videos and you want to support us, the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. That would really help us out. Happy quilting.